Okadi here. Today we're going to be going over our Moto 1. That is an order calling Moto. This is a summon spider tank build. We're using summon spider tank and we have spider tank focus fire and spider tank steamroll along with multi strike, maniacal army, and tendon slicer. Uh, focus fire and steamroll are not really a requirement at all. Um, I, I was using them to kind of play around with them. I mean, you could just run servant damage instead of focus fire and like wind projectiles instead of steamroll and still do really good damage. I think I was doing 380 mil average damage with the two new skills on it. And let's see what we do. 350 to 370 mil average damage, 308. Uh, not a real big difference. The new skills are not impressive unless you get a lot of them and you level them up and you make them much better than just using the standard skills. As you can see, we're, we're doing an average about the same DPS with this noble and magnificent skill. As we do with like wind projectiles and whatever. This was like about the same. Not a big difference there in the different ones. So you're really flexible in what you can pick right here. Uh, you could play electric conversion and run uh, lightning damage here. I'm running physical here. Multi strike is really important for the skill and it's one of our primary scalers. We are running vulnerability with extended duration, increased area, activation, medium, elite. I've, I've started to really like this because it automates the skills more effectively than prep does. And I really only care about my curse being up whenever it's an elite. Like regular stuff just dies, it doesn't matter. Spiral Strike with Quick Mobility and Harden for our movement skill here. Dark Gate with Activation Medium Elite again. Well Fought Battle, Cooldown Reduction, and Extended Duration. Machine Armory with Prep, Well Fought Battle, and Cooldown Reduction. I'll probably change that over to an Activation Medium Elite again because I really only care about these uh, cooldowns being active when elites or bosses are around. We are running weapon amp, precise projectiles, rejuvenation, and thunder spirit. Thunder spirit is very good. I'm running elemental duo right now because I had the armor that gives you minus one synthetic troop before and I needed seven minions up. Now I've got eight minions up. I don't need elemental duo. So depending on what kind of body armor you're wearing, you, you may or may not need elemental duo. As far as our passive skills go, we are a God of Machines, Machinist, and Warlock. Uh, we'll have a build code for all this, but you can see this is all pretty straightforward. You don't really have choices here. Orders is the only one that makes sense. Isomorphic Arms is an absolute min requirement for the build. Um, boss is the only one here that makes sense. Burning Aggression is the only one here that makes sense. So, I mean, you just you take the ones that are obvious. Go to all skill levels. And four to all support skill levels. This also makes you makes it easier for you to reserve your R's. So it's very, very important. And so your passive skills are really straightforward. We're just taking damage everywhere we can with a little bit of cooldown recovery. I mean, damage everywhere we can. A little bit of defenses whenever we have an option to get some defenses here. Um, so nothing complicated in the passive skills themselves as far as our hero traits go. Uh, we're taking either Dex or Int Heroic Memory here, and Armor Heroic Memory here, and a Movement Speed Heroic Memory here, preferably with Minion Damage or Minion Damage or Minion Crit, Minion Attack Speed, so on and so forth, is your secondary fixed affixes here. We are taking Veteran, Toughest Nails, and Charge Forward. The only option you have here is whether you take Go for Broke or Charge Forward. And the only difference here is is if you have only a secondary erosion slate or none no erosion immunity or all immunity and so at the point that we're at on the character right now i have all immunity so i have minions immune to lightning damage minions immune to fire damage minions immune to cold minions immune to erosion and minions immune to fizz and then we also have a plus one synthetic troop level slate here and so because i have all of the minion immunes, which also, by the way, give us a ton of survivability through max life and uh, regeneration, things like that. Very important. But since we have all immunities on all of our minions, on our hero trait, we can comfortably take charge forward. Now, if you don't have all immunity on, on all your minions and you just go for erosion immunity first, 
you can take go for broke. If you do not have erosion immunity, you go back for charge forward, and you're just going to be resummoning your minions a lot because they'll be constantly dying. And if you do, if you have no immunity at all on your minions, then you'll probably take last stand and charge forward so that you have a point where they're immune during overload and then they'll start dying off and you'll resummon them and then they'll go to overload again and they'll be immune for a while and then they'll start dying off. And you'll have that little cycle of, of summoning your minions constantly. Whenever you no longer want to summon your minions, you get erosion immunity and go for broke. And when you have all the immunities, you can go back to charge forward with tough as nails. And that makes them incredibly strong. Now, these are like a lot of different ways to move your hero traits around based on the divine slates that you have available. In the ultra end game, you're not going to care about immunity. You're just going to run a ton of command and tough as nails and charge forward and just deal with resummoning your minions. From a min-max standpoint, but I like having permanent minions. I don't like my minions being dead all the time and constantly having to look at my minion bar at the bottom to see whether I need to resummon them or not. As far as items go, Farewell Desire is a very cheap sword that is a, just a very good solid sword. Since we're using multi-strike, it scales our multi-strike very well. We have a rare shield with dex, int, damage, and resistances. Rare ring with dex, int, resistances, and damage. Rare ring with dex ant resistances and damage. There's a pattern here. Gloves, dex ant resistances and damage. Armor, dex ant resistances and minion damage. For our uniques, we are running Mind Infusion, Cry of Divinity, False God Skin, and Fate Crown. Now the new Wardens whatever neck would be better here, but it's expensive, so I'm not using that. The Cry of Divinity with a corroded command per second would be better as well. And then same thing, you could corrode your mind infusion. But this is just very cheap gear to get this guy started in a T8. I think I spent a grand total of maybe 10 FE on all of his gear to get it to this point. Miscellaneous crafting material buys and things like that. And so this will get you to a good point so that you can do T8. So we'll run over here and do a T8 real quick so you can see how it does. We will not do a T8 because I'm all out of T8 beacon. Son of a biscuit eater. We will come to the trade house. And we will purchase a T8 beacon so that we can showcase the guy doing a stupid Thunderwaste it is. Spending FE for terrible. You got it. Two for one. And we dive in. Thunder wastes. Blinded. Minus 30% additional fire damage for you. Uh, minus 20% when you receive damage. That looks like a nice little map for us to do an example on. We'll start off by summoning all your pets here and then diving in. Now you typically want to hit things with your whirling blaze because that, that does give you hardened bust which makes you a little bit tankier except whenever you just dive into stuff and then don't move and then die because you're talking. As you can see, DPS is very solid for the 8s here, but our survivability still needs some help. We're at 34,000 right now, and most of that is because we have not done anything to get our armor up and our max life up, so we do need a little bit more survivability gates. The minus 20 Ellie res every time we're hit is a pretty nasty map mod to run as well. 1 FE. We paid for half of this beacon.
And boss damage. Guy does really solid single target damage. And there you go. The T8s run fairly smoothly. Um, we do need more defenses in general on the guy, but this is a really, really budget entry level to T8 on the moto. Uh, the next goals would be to get more armor, get our memories leveled up, and get more life pools so that we can take some one hits. I am currently also reserving rejuvenation for seal conversion. Ideally, I would ha like to have more regeneration without having to seal convert rejuvenation here, and that would help out with our survivability as well. And if you have any questions on the build, leave a comment down below or come by Twitch and ask. I'm happy to answer them. And I'll be glad to look at your build and kind of let you know where you're going wrong if you're struggling and what you can do to get things put together. Other than that, thank you very much. Y'all have a wonderful day. Peace.